This is a demonstration on how to use the scanner in the lab in room 214. There's also a scanner in 204, and the process is similar, um, but the software's different software. So in 214, you're going to use Epson Scan, which is shortcutted to the desktop. And there's also a desktop folder called Scans. And when you make a scan, it will save that scan into the Scans folder. And so that's where you're going to go to retrieve your scan. In room 204, the scanner connects through image capture instead of Epson scan. Um, it's going to be a very similar process. It also has a folder on the desktop called scans, and that's where you're going to retrieve your scan when you're through. I'm going to demonstrate the Epson scan process. Um, and if you have questions about the process using image capture in room 204, um, I'll address those individually. So the first thing that you're going to do is um, you're going to go to the desktop and you're going to find the icon that says Epson scan. You're going to double click that. So when you launch the scanning software, you're going to see two windows. Um, window on the left that has your inputs, right, where you can control the input to tell the scanner exactly what you're scanning and what resolution you want to scan at and what size you want to scan at, etc. On the right hand side, you're going to have the preview window. Um, and it may show you the previous scan that someone made. So I made a scan of my hand, and so you can see uh, the scan of my hand. Now you may come in here and this may not be set to the right mode. So the first thing you want to do is in your input palette, you want to come up to the top and where it says mode, you want to make sure it's set to professional mode. Just to show you, it could be in one of the other modes. Um, so it'll look different if it's in one of the other modes. We want this to be in professional mode because that'll give us all of our tools. Um, so the first thing that you're going to do is do a preview. When you hit the preview, it'll do a quick scan, previewing what's on the scanner bed, which right now there's nothing on the scanner bed. So let's talk about our settings. In your settings, um, up at the top, it says document type. Basically, there are two different document types. There's reflective and there's film. If you're not if you're not um, scanning a negative, then you will not use the film setting. You'll use the reflective setting. So probably the only people that would use the film setting would be uh, photography students. Um, you, you can use it if you have film to scan. Um, I can show you that individually. But most of the things that we're going to be scanning are in the reflective setting. Uh, the next thing you want to have it set to is scanner glass as the source um, for the exposure type. You're going to want that set to photo uh, in most cases. Um, if you're doing um, a document, you would set it to document. But for our purposes, um, photo is going to be the setting we want. Um, for the image type, you're going to want to set it to the highest uh, bit rate. If you want color, so that's going to be 48-bit color. Um, if you want a grayscale image, set it to 16-bit grayscale. And if you just want a black and white image, set it to black and white. But in this case, I'm going to set it to 48-bit color. For the resolution, um, you're going to set this according to how you intend to use the image. So if you intend to use the image for something, um, you're going to take that image and post it online, you're going to set this to 100 dpi. If you intend to use it at the scale that it scans and print it to a desktop printer, you're going to set it to 300 dpi. If you intend to scan it at the scale that it is, but then upscale it in uh, Photoshop or another photo editing piece of software, then you're going to want to oversample. And all that means is setting it at a higher resolution to allow for the situation where you know you're going to scale the original image up. I wish I could tell you exactly what to set it to, but I can't. It depends on how much you're scaling it up. But if you're just going to scale it up, um, let's say, you know, less than 200%, then I would set this to 600. Um, if you know you're going to scale it up, you know, significantly, say, you know, three or four times bigger than its original size, 
then you can set this all the way up to 1200. Um, in terms of figuring out what to set this when you're scaling, that may take a little bit of trial and error on your part. So you might have to scan, um, scale it up to 600. If that's not enough resolution, then scan it again with the resolution set higher, maybe all the way up to 1200. Do be aware that the higher you set the resolution, the longer it takes to scan, but the higher quality image you're gonna get. The next thing to make note of is that you have some tools um, for unsharpening the image, descreening the image, um, adjusting the color, etc. cetera. Um, usually the ones that I use here is I usually check the unsharp mask one. Um, I do the descreening, especially if it's something that's coming out of a, a magazine. So if you look at the options for that, you have newspaper, which is 85. So if you're scanning something from a newspaper, use the newspaper setting. If you're scanning something from a magazine, use the magazine setting. If you're scanning something from a fine art coffee table book, then use that fine art print setting. Um, typically, most of the time, um, you can leave this if you're in doubt on that medium setting, the, the magazine setting. So if you open up the scanner and there's a lot of dust on the scanning bed, then you're going to want to go ahead and clean that. So in the lab, by the instructor's computer, so this is in 214, there's Windex and paper towels, so make sure you clean off any dust uh, before you make any scans. So for your assignment, you have various different categories, and let's go ahead and make examples in each of those categories. So the first category, um, or one of the categories, is to do art historical works. So I have, I'm gonna go ahead and open the scanner. Uh, be aware that if the scanning um, back is missing, so there's a white backing plate that can be removed. Sometimes that's removed when people are scanning film and they forget to put it back. It just slides back into these uh, slots. So um, you should be able to find that. Usually if someone forgets to put it back, it's just laying nearby. Now they shouldn't forget. Um, so put that back on. So I just have this book um, and it's got this image of um, an etching of Adam and Eve on the cover. So I'm going to use that for an example of an art historical work. So I'm going to put that on the scanner. You want to align it to the top right hand corner where it has this arrow, right? Um, in this case, you probably, you can close the top, but you probably don't need to. Uh, be aware that the top is designed in such a way that it will accommodate the thickness of a book. So in our settings, I'm gonna go ahead and set this or just check to make sure that the resolution is set to 300. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and now hit the preview button. So you'll see a preview of your scan what you can do at, what you can do at this point is you can um, isolate the part that you want to scan so if you don't isolate a, a particular part it's going to scan the whole thing in this case we don't want all this extra wide area it'll just eat up memory and I'll have to edit it out later anyway so to isolate an area just click and drag with your mouse which will pull a marquee a rectilinear marquee and anything that's inside that marquee will be scanned. If you don't pull this exactly correct the first time, you can adjust it by putting your cursor on the edge of one of the four edges of the marquee and then just click and drag to adjust. So now if I were to scan, it would cut off their heads. Now I don't want that, so I'm going to readjust that. Once you get what you want in terms of the uh, marquee, um, you just simply want to come and hit the scan button. Okay, so there's the first scan. So we can go to the scan folder and I can look in that folder and you can see that it scanned uh, the Adam and Eve image. Um, let me close that for a second. If you wanna do another scan, um, I have another book. We can do another art historical source. Um, so this is, you know, maybe I wanna do uh, the raft of the Medusa. So I'm going to put that 
In this case, I'm not gonna close the scanning bed because I kinda need to hold this book um, straight. I'm gonna do 600 again, I mean, sorry, 300 again. Um, I wanna preview it, so hit the preview button. It'll scan and you'll see a preview. And then I wanna adjust my marquee. So I'm just gonna pull on the edges of the marquee to adjust it. Now in this case, I'm losing part of the image. Um, this is just a demo, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, but I'm losing part of the image because of the fold, you know, you know the, um, the spine of the book. So we'll just crop that out. Okay, and then I'll go and I'll hit scan for that one. So if you look in the scan folder, um, there's the raft of the Medusa. Um, so you're gonna do art historical works. We'll be using those in the first project. Um, another one of the categories is uh, pattern. So I have these origami papers that you know are beautifully patterned. So um, I can scan one of those. So I'm gonna put it on the scanner. Shut the lid. Maybe in this case, um, I will oversample. So maybe my intention is to blow that up in scale. So I'll do 600 this time for my resolution. Um, then I want to hit the preview button. And maybe in this case, I zoom in just to a detail. Maybe I don't want the entire pattern. So I'm gonna pull this marquee, you know, in where I'm just getting a part of the pattern. Maybe that little part. And then hit the scan button. Okay, so if we look at that in the scan folder, you'll have a cropped down version of that original pattern. So one of your categories is patterning. So you're gonna do examples of that. Um, one of the categories is body parts. So that could be your face, it could be your hands, um, it could be your feet. Um, so, you know, it could be your elbow. I'm just gonna kinda do maybe um, my elbow. So I'll do that. So again, I'm gonna put my elbow on the scanner. I'm going to hit the preview button. It can kind of be fun in this case to raise the uh, resolution. So I'm gonna raise the resolution to 1200. And I'm gonna crop this down um, you know, to a, a smaller area. So maybe I'll just get that little crease um, and I'll hit the scan button. Now in this case, you're gonna wanna try to not, not to move, right? Uh, it's just giving me an error because I need to take de-screening off. So I'm taking the de-screening function off. I've just forgot. Uh, you want the de-screening when you're scanning something that is already printed, right? And in this case, this isn't something that's already printed, so it doesn't need to be de-screened. So let me try this again. Okay, so if we look at that, um, let's look at that larger. So you'll be able to see like, you know, the little wrinkles in my skin and uh, hair and freckles, you know, so all the little details uh, because I scanned that at such a high resolution. Um, we could do another one. Maybe I do, you know, my um, thumbnail or the back of my hand. I think I'll do the back of my hand. So um, we're gonna wanna preview it again.
and uh, you know maybe we crop down just right on that knuckle right there like where it's you know pressed into the glass um, let me raise this resolution even higher it'll go all the way up to uh, 12,800 now I don't want to do that but let's do maybe uh, 2,400 and we'll scan it again It's just warning me that the image size may be big and the scanning time long because I set such a high resolution. So I'm going to hit continue. Okay, so if we look at this scan, um, again, if we blow that up really large, you're going to be able to see all the details of the little crinkles and you know uh, wrinkles and such that's um, in my skin. So body parts, um, one of the categories is movement and people are sometimes confused by this one. So typically, um, you know, what we're doing with this project is we're experimenting with the scanner and the scanner is essentially a camera. It's just a special kind of camera. Um, it's a camera that has no depth of field. So, um, or it does have a depth of field, but a very limited depth of field and essentially Everything that's on the glass is in focus, and anything that is away from the glass recedes out of focus. And you can get some really interesting effects that way. So one of the categories that I want you to do is objects. So when you do objects, um, you can get kind of cool effects. Um, and maybe we'll do objects next and then movement after that. So I have this um, little hula girl, right? So as an object, I can put that on the scanner. Now you're not going to be able to close the top when you do this. Um, I'm going to change the resolution to something lower. Maybe I'll set it to 600. Let's do a preview. And so we're experimenting with things that you probably usually wouldn't do with a scanner. So usually with a scanner, you want things to not be dimensional. Usually with a scanner, you don't want things to be moving. And we're going to experiment with both of those things. So when you scan uh, this little hula girl or any kind of object, you're going to get some parts of the object a little bit out of focus. So I'm going to pull my marquee so that um, she's completely included. Now notice that you'll also see, because I don't have the scanner lid closed, you're going to see um, parts of the room, right? So you're seeing other stuff that's in the room, and that's the scanner lid uh, that you're seeing centered. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit scan on this one. So if we look at that, you can kind of see that it's more sharply in focus on her face. It's a little less sharply in focus on her feet because that's away from the scanner bed. Um, so, so this is a little solar powered device. So where the, the stand that she's on is touching the glass, it's sharply in focus. And then where her feet are, the back of that little stand is out of focus. So you can play with stuff like that. Um, so the next object that we're gonna scan is um, this glass. So I have this glass. I'm gonna put that on the scanner careful when you're putting objects on the scanner that you don't scratch the glass, right, or break the glass. So don't put something on the scanner that would endanger, you know, the glass, right? So I'm going to put that glass on the scanner glass and we'll preview that. This might be a better example of seeing that effect where a dimensional object is kind of partially out of focus. So let's adjust the marquee to include the entire glass. And we'll scan that. So scanned objects. So you can kind of see that it's sharper in focus in the middle of the glass, a little less in focus on the edges of the glass. The next category is movement, and this is kind of uh, the one that everyone has the most fun with. Um, so in this case, I'm not going to use this marquee, or I'm going to pull the marquee so that it's 
pretty much covering the entire area because you want to give yourself room to move uh, the object that you're moving. So I'm just going to move, um, maybe we'll do the hula girl. Um, so I'm going to place her on the screen. In this case, you won't be able to, to get a preview. Um, I'm just going to start the scan. And as it starts scanning, I'm going to move the object. Be aware that the higher you set the resolution, the slower the scanning bar will go. And so you have you know, more of an opportunity to play with this. So I'm basically just um, moving this. You know, you can spin it in a circle. And it's going to capture all that movement. So if you look at it, it looks like that, which is kind of cool, right? So uh, movement, you can play with movement. It's going to kind of um, distort and stretch the image when you do that. We can try that again. We can do uh, the glass. So I'll just kind of roll the glass, put it at the top of the scanner, hit scan, let the scan start. and then just move it along. You can roll it, you can wiggle it. You could take it off and put it back on, maybe in a different position. So I just turned it upside down. So you'll get really interesting effects with this one. Again, it's almost like finger painting with uh, pixels. So one of the categories is to make analog collages right on the scanner. So you could do that with objects, um, especially things that tend to be flat, um, stuff that you collect as collage material. I have this image that I got from a magazine. Um, I have some pieces of you know torn paper, just colored paper. And then I have these googly eyes, and then this textured piece of paper. So I'm just going to kind of begin to build a collage with that. Now, this can be um, a little, you know, you want to plan it as you go. You don't necessarily have to have a, a, a set idea when you, you know, begin. Um, and it's going to kind of come together organically, okay? So um, be you know, open to that. Uh, this is about experimentation. Now you're going to need to put these face down. So I'm going to start by putting googly eyes. I'm just going to kind of, you know, let this can be random to some degree. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, this first ex uh, project is all about experimentation. So be open to, you know, experimenting. And, and um, chance is a excellent artistic tool. So I'm going to put a bunch of googly eyes down first. And then I'm going to lay down this piece of texture. Now again, you want the pattern to part down. Um, then I'm going to lay down maybe a few of these torn pieces of colored paper. Um, and then finally, I'm going to lay down the image of the woman's face. Now, I can adjust this after I scan it if I need to make some adjustments, right? So let's do a preview. And if you like it, then go ahead and scan. If you want to make some slight adjustments, then uh, you know 
make any slight adjustments that you want to make. You know, I, I really like this. Um, I have some space at the bottom that I think that I will make a, a slight alteration here. So I have additional um, googly eyes. So in this black space at the bottom, I think I'll just put some more of these googly eyes out there. little tiny googly eye um, and then maybe I put a piece of um, torn paper there okay so let's preview it again yes yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that I like the way that the plastic of the googly eyes catches the light of the scanner and you get kind of this uh, prismatic rainbow effect okay so then to keep that scan I'm going to hit the scan button So that one finished scanning, and this is what it looks like, which I think is pretty interesting, um, just as it stands as a collage. So your categories are art historical, body parts, objects, patterns, movement, and analog collage, where you're going to assemble a collage right on the scanner bed. So you're going to do at least five of each of those. So that will give you 30 as a minimum. If you want to do more than five, the whole point of this is to experiment. I've had students do hundreds of them before. So if you get really excited about it and get into it, you want to make more than that, uh, you certainly can. Um, but that's basically what you're going to do for the first project. Now, once you get all your scans, um, you're going to bring your thumb drive over to the scanning station, plug your thumb drive into um, this particular computer transfer these files out of the scan folder onto your thumb drive and then move to the computer station that you're working at. So that's the research phase of the first project. So have fun.